So the use of integration by parts is almost as much an art as it is a mathematical process. And the problem is that if I have this antiderivative that I can't find directly, I can use integration by parts, but what it gives me is another antiderivative. And if I can't evaluate that, I haven't really gone any place. So let's take a look at that. We have to be careful in our choices of u and v. So in general, uh, well, I'll go ahead and make some choice for u and dv, and maybe I'll end up with something like this, and maybe I can't figure out how to find the antiderivative, at which point the best thing to do is to don't give up. No, we're not going to give up. Uh, we're going to make a different choice in our possibilities for u and dv. Now, one of the important considerations here is that I'm going to have to find an antiderivative for whatever my choice of dv is going to be. So while we read this as u dv, and this has a tendency to cause us to pick u first, uh, keep in mind that at whatever's left over, I'm going to have to anti-differentiate. So if I have something that is left over for dv, I want to pick something that's impossible to find. No, no, I don't want to do that. I want to choose something that I can find the antiderivative of easily. And the last thing to remember, maybe I don't know what this antiderivative is. The thing to remember is that this is another antiderivative, so I can always apply a second integration technique to try and evaluate it. If I don't recognize it immediately, I might apply an integration technique and see where it takes me. So, for example, so let's consider finding the antiderivative of x log dx. And we should verify again that u substitutions don't work, and we'll try integration by parts. And again, because whatever we choose as dv, we're going to have to find the antiderivative. It makes sense that we might want to choose our dv first before we do anything else. So I don't know what the antiderivative of log is, so maybe I'll try x dx is my dv, whatever's left over is going to be our u, and I will differentiate my u, I will anti-differentiate my dv, and I'll put it together to get an expression, u dv minus uv du, and substituting those things in and letting the dust settle, I find that I have this part, not a problem, and then this antiderivative, think, 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 can I do that, can I do that, oh, yeah, that's an easy one. So I do have an antiderivative I can evaluate, and there's my answer. Well, what about something else? So, for example, antiderivative of x squared e to power x dx. So I might decide, you know, I have to differentiate and anti-differentiate. Well, a polynomial isn't too bad to anti-differentiate. e to the x, I always forget what that's going to be, so maybe I'll make that the thing I have to differentiate. So I'll let u be e to the x, dv is x squared dx. I will differentiate the thing I need to differentiate. I will anti-differentiate the thing I need to anti-differentiate. I'll substitute everything into my integration by parts formula. And after all the dust settles, I have that, no problem. Antiderivative of this thing, uh, well, maybe I'm a little hesitant on that one. I started with an x squared e to the x. I end with an x cubed e to the x, and on some level I should be suspicious that this is harder to work with than this is. And so this integral here seems to be something that will be harder to work with than what I started with. And so maybe what that suggests is my initial choice isn't so good. Well, let's try switching things around. So maybe this time I'll let u be x squared, dv be all the rest of it, and I'll deal with the fact of having to find the antiderivative of e to the x. So I differentiate what I need to, I anti-differentiate what I need to. Oh, world's easiest antiderivative, that's not a problem. And I substitute into my integration by parts relationship, uv minus integral v du, and, well, I still don't know what this is, but it seems to be at least easier. I've gone from an x squared down to an x, and while I can always apply another integration technique, and in this particular case, maybe I'll try integration by parts a second time on 
this antiderivative. So again, I'll pick something to be u and dv. I'll differentiate what I need to, and I differentiate what I need to. I'll substitute that in. Watch the parentheses here. This is an important one. This is subtracting this antiderivative. If you're not careful where the parentheses are located, you'll end up with too much cancellation. But at this point, the integral I can't do becomes an integral I can do, world's easiest antiderivative, and after all the dust settles, I get this as my antiderivative. Well, here's another case that might show up. I might take a look at the antiderivative of e to the x sine of x, and here I'm going to try, oh, I don't know, how about u equals sine x dv equals e to the x. Um, I chose this because I know that if I differentiate a trigonometric function, there's these pluses and minuses I have to remember, and it's easier for us to go forward differentiating than to go backwards anti-differentiating. doesn't really make a difference in this case. Uh, but I have u, I have dv, I find the antiderivative that I need to. I find the derivative, antiderivative, substitute that into my integration by part. Here's u dv uv minus antiderivative of v du, and I have another antiderivative another integral I have to do. Well, let's uh, do integration by parts again. This time I'm going to use u equals cosine x dv equals e to the x. So again, I have my u and dv. I differentiate what I need to. I anti-differentiate what I need to. I substitute things back in. And after all the dust settles, I end up with this. And I say, I, 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 that's, that's what I started with. I couldn't find this, and now I end up with something that involves this. I've kind of gone in a circle. Well, not quite. We've actually done something that's very useful in mathematics, which is, I don't know what this thing is, but I can tell you something about it. Whatever this is, it satisfies the equation, this equals this thing over here. And as soon as I have an equation, wonder of algebra is that I can solve that equation for anything I want to. So I'll solve it for the thing that I don't know. I'll shift this over to the other side. I get two of them. And let's see. Well, I wanted to find antiderivative e to the x sine x. I don't want to find two antiderivative e. Oh, oh, that's okay. I know how to do algebra. I can get rid of this two by dividing everything by two. And that gives me my antiderivative. And there's my solution.